in progress. All right. Let's see if that. Uh, <sighs> Okay. I'm going to start the learning sponsors and then we'll try to get through today's the year of learning by Suan Arni Garlick and Miriam Malka Pro Man and Philip Man. Yisrael David Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Beryl Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch. Yosef Mayer ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Henya Rivka Pro Rosna bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch. In the memory of family murdered in the Holocaust, Harav Tzvi Hirsch ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah bat Ephraim, Yisrael David ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Miriam bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Pesel bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmo ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch. Leslie and Gail Kaplan, in memory of their parents, Harry and Marjorie Sedell, Irving and Pearl Kaplan. Children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of Toby Paris, Sarah Tova, but Yisrael Dove in her memory. Charlie Gelfenstein and Sam Levine, in memory of Ramona Levine, Rachel Mata, but Asher. Friends of Nina Moynester, Nechama Asna, but Yitzchak Aharon. Many friends of Stephen Vigdor, Lezecher Nishmat, Simcha Melech ben Meir Leib Halevi. Friends of Marcy Kurtz, in memory of her great niece, Leah Bracha. We have a month of learning. Seems like it's been more than a month. Mm. Lydia and Abe Krause's many friends in honor of their 50th anniversary. A week of learning by David and Sharon Karpel, Rabbi Tzvi and Robin Karpel. In memory of David and Tzvi's mother, Malka Bas Mordechai. Dr. Mark Scher, in memory of his father, Mordechai ben Menachem Manas. Ruth Kosman, in memory of her husband, Shmuel ben Yitzchak. Uh, he was a fine gentleman. He was a past president of the show. Yes, he was. Right? Okay. Uh, Ruth Kosman, oh, yeah, yeah, Sam Kosman. Carol and David so Kaplan, in memory of Hannah and Ron That's Goldberg's easy. daughter, Tamar Yenta Bad Yerachmiel Yitzchak. Uh, today is the eighth. Correct? Yes. And therefore, yes. today is the eighth. We have a day of learning by Dr. Ron and Raina Berger in memory of his father, Shabtai ben Yehuda Leib, by Susan Fuchter Kramer and Shelley Kramer in memory of her mother, Bat Bela Bat Yeshaya, by Esther and Donald Press in memory of her mother, Chaya Chasha Bat Zvi Ze'ev. And uh, that looks, and also on Shabbos by Sharon and Fred Lisker, in memory of her father, Yisrael Moshe ben Elia Halevi, also by Norma and Steve Hamburger on Shabbos, in memory of her father, Shmuel ben Chaim, as well as Cheryl and Mike Tuckman, in honor of the marriage of their grandson, Naftali Dahan, to Hadassah Asuli. Okay. I would assume it's a relation, right? Okay. Very nice. All right. So we can mark those having been said. All right. Very good. Okay. May Shamas have an aliyah. Crank a few velti yeshir shamatzliya. Koban Israel, a good gebench. Yeah. Okay. A lot of a uh, lot of days of learning this coming week. Okay. All right. All right. Where, where are we? We're on Lamed Bays, right? Yeah. We're on Lamed Bays. We're going to jump back for a bit. But we're on Lamed Beis Amud Aleph is today's daf. Okay, we got to the point, we sort of rolled over a little bit. So that's why I want to go back. Okay, so if we go back to the bottom of Lamed Aleph Amud Beis, all right, towards the bottom. Okay. All right, so the Gemara there starts off where the Gemara, right? That's the easiest play to start. Ve'i zikat shnei yibamim da'oraita, says the Gemara, 
again, if we're going to say that Zika can be with two Yabamim, according to the Torah, Shema Yamru Shnei Yabamot Habaot Mi Bait Echad Mit Yabamot, that they might say, therefore, that two Yabamot, okay, from the same household can do Yibum, right? And what happens then? If that's the case, in a sense, if there are two women, then you could say, fine, one could do Yibum to one, and one could do Yichalitza to another. But, says the Gemara, Gezera, Shem Yamru, Bayit Echad Miktsato. Right? So they're going to say what they're concerned about. The Art Scroll points it out to us in, uh, I'm going to want to use its language, right? Yeah, because of uh, something I want to point out, right? What do they say, right? Sh uh, Art School wants to say they might uh, uh, impose a decree. Pr people will say from one house in which there are two of us who are widows of the same man, Miktsato Banui, was partially rebuilt through Yibu. Okay, that's why I wanted to say. Art Scroll doesn't even give a note there. Okay, all right. So what happens? Our, my uh, Shinantem explains it a little differently. All right. Namely, the Gemara is asking a question. Perhaps people will say, the, all right, let them do Yibum to one and Chalitza to the other. Uh, on, on 30, uh, note one. 32. On 32, note one. People might think that both widows were Shimon's wives. Upon seeing one taken in Yibum and the other released through Chalitza, they will think this is always the procedure when a deceased man leaves two wives. Again, they have to do both Yibum and Chalitza. Right? So right? They might think. That the two of them came from the same household. Okay? And they think that only one, this Shinantim says, and that only one really needs Yibum. Right? Right? They might suspect that whenever there's a situation where there are two Yibamot uh, from the same household, that you do one Yibum and you do the other one Chalitza. All right? And they would say, here's a, it's a fuller explanation, Yomru that they would therefore say that the second one needs Chalitza and doesn't need Yibum whatsoever or maybe doesn't go without anything, okay? Right, because they'd argue if the same household, okay, why shouldn't it be as if they were co-wives? <laughs> if you do Yibum for one, why shouldn't that be pat motir, pat here, the second one? Okay, that's how I, I felt I had, okay. V'yomru, right, so now comes the Gemara for today. Right, on 32, right, 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 so now we pick up, right, so what will happen, people will then say, what, if you do Yibum to the first, then that should seem to imply that if the second one, second woman is the widow of the same man, okay, then automatically you would do chalitza to her. Well, that's what the next line in the Gemara says. You do one to one and one to another. Okay, so therefore that's why the Gemara comes and then says us Alexeira. No, no, he says, but if he's going to make Yibum first 
and then he's going to ah, that's how the Gemara then gives no that's problem. how the Gemara is going to give an explanation well, uh, right. it didn't get there yet right okay so that's the problem so the problem is people will think you're going to do yibum to one and automatically do chalitza to the other right because they come from the same household that's what they're going to say the first vahadar chalitza Okay, and then afterwards you go ahead and do chalitza to the other, right? Hachinami, elegzera, but rather the gezerabites made a gezera. Dilma chalitza, okay, beresha, but that may be perhaps that might work only. I'm going to say in a situation where they did chalitza first, but chalitza beresha vahadar miyabim. And then afterwards they did Yibo. Okay. Which at that point she had to get back to being an average. Uh -huh. again. Right. Vikamla, but then you come and face the situation, Ba'ashir Lo Yivne. That in that situation, we're having to deal with the Pasuk in the Torah that says the requirement for Yibum has to be to rebuild the household, okay, of that individual that died. Okay. Rahmana Amar, Kevan Shalo Bana, and according to the Torah, since he did Chalitza first, okay, in other words, he refused to fulfill the Torah's mandate, what happens? Kevan Shalo Bana, Shuv Lo Yivne. He therefore doesn't have not only the obligation, he doesn't have the permission to go back and do another act, regardless if it's either Yibum or Chalitza. Okay, That's by true. opting to do Chalitza first, okay, there is nothing he can do with that, so to speak, second widow. That's the point, okay? So what happens? So therefore, all right? V'kam le'bash lo yivne, right? So we said, v'shuv lo yivne. Okay, now, Amar Rava says, Rava, in this case, let's say, let's say perhaps there's a slightly different situation here. Say of those two widows, he made a ma'amar with one of them, right? And then he decides he wants to uh, reduce the strength of the ma'amar. What does he do? He gives her a get. He might have thought, well, since a ma'amar is only like erusin, remember we saw that discussion in the Gemara. If I do give her a get, which would be the normal way to break an erusin, that might be the normal appropriate way to break the ma'amar. Okay? If that's the case, says the Gemara, hutra tsarata avalhi asura. In that case, says Rava, the co-wife would be out. She would be redeemed. She's permitted, okay? But the woman herself who had the ma'amar, she's forbidden, right? The mechalfa b'ba'alat get. Okay, so the Gemara says here that maybe we come, can become confused was who was the one of the two widows that actually received the get. Was it the one he gave the ma'amar to? Okay. And therefore thinking that he that reduces the status of the ma'amar and therefore does he still have to do something to reduce the zika? Because he did, giving her the, the get doesn't reduce the zika. The only thing to break the zika is either Yibum or Chalitza. Like the one I gave a get to, doesn't it sever the relationship? No, no. Not completely. No. That's the part of the issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if he gave the get to the other one that he didn't do the ma'amar to, all the more so is there a problem because he's had a ma'amar with that, with that one widow, which means his intent was to fulfill it through Yibum. Okay. So they might get confused with who was the one, right, who received the get. Now, says the Gemara, Ika da Amri, 
there are others who teach this statement of Rava in a different manner. And this is how they said it. Amar Rava, Natan get the ma'amaro. It's very clear that he gave the get to the woman that he made him, to the widow, to the one widow he had made the ma'amar with. And what happens then? Hutra afilu he. And then even, not only is her tsara exempted, but she herself also is now, so to speak, cleared. Ma'itama, okay? Ma'itama, what's the reasoning? Ma'ida'avad ba shakle. What he did with her, namely giving the ma'amar, shakle, he's removed. So, it's exactly. So in that case, right? So there are two, so the Ikeda Amri, uh, the second Ikeda Amri gives a very different uh, uh, spin, so to speak, on what Rava is saying, okay? Which comes back, to remember, to our discussion earlier, what is the strength of the Ma'amar? Is it simply like a Rusin, okay? And therefore a get would break it? Or do we say, no, the ma'amar is so strong because it's a clear designation of desire to perform yibum that it's almost as strong as actual marriage, okay? All right, that finishes that example and we go on now, okay? Now, what are we coming to? Okay, again, all right. We have now only two, two brothers, brothers, not three. Okay, so two brothers married to two sisters. Okay, and one of the brothers dies. Okay, now let's jump ahead just for a moment to think for the surviving brother. Can he perform yibum? To that widow? No, he can't because she's Aishasa. Right? So, okay, so what happens? So, all right, so we if we if we keep that thought in mind, at the moment she is forbidden to him because she's Aishasa. Now says what? Okay. All right. But it's the still the same erva. Okay. So what happens though? The Mishnah continues. And afterwards, the brother who was, who was the Yabam in that situation, his wife, the sister of the earlier widow, she dies. Now we might say, we no longer have the situation of Achotisha, right? Should she should he be able to do yibum in an or chalitza under that situation? Right? Says the Mishnah, Zo Asura Alav Olamit. She is forbidden it forever from him. Why? Alav Since at one point when she initially fell to him as Yibama. She was forbidden because of achot disha. When that happens, we're saying, therefore, according to the Mishnah, right? She is never available to him. She was. She was also to him right away as as a achot Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but you might think no that normally when it, when there are two sisters, uh -huh. so the sister is, is forbidden because it's the achot uh, Right. But if the one of them died, if the wife died, he's permitted to marry his her sister again because right. he's no longer an issue. Right. But here, yeah, since the heter of Yibam was stopped by a chayis uh -huh. then there's You're no more heter forever. That's it. forever. Okay. Right. And that's okay. So in a sense, okay, you had a situation that was a doraita situation, where it itself we know that doraita you can't marry the sister. Right, the wife's sister. Well, but if the while well, she's alive, though, that's the point. Right. 
So here, if she's dead, that's why you might have thought, hey, all right, uh, it would have been okay. But here we're saying basically Durabanan. So in this case, is this an example of a Durabanan overriding a Doraita situation? Maybe that's going to be the question that the Gemara is going to. It's blocked. Right. Well, that's what we're going to get. To. So what do you have left? You only have the Esor. Right. Okay. So that's what we're going to see. So what happens? So the Gemara comes back and says, Pshita, isn't that obvious? All right. Hashta, here in this case, Umahatam, whereas before, when we had the situation of three brothers, the lo midcha mehai beta legamre, where it wasn't deferred from the, the from the household, in other words, from that family, okay, whatsoever, okay, amar the lo, you said no, hacha, here in this case, okay, of the two brothers, I might have thought to argue. The kat midcha mehai beta legamre, where it's totally removed from that household. Okay, in other words, okay, the 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 potential yabam has right no longer the relationship of of a sister-in-law co combined with yabama. Okay, in that case, local shakin. Wouldn't that be the case? Tanaha, Tana Baresha. So the, what we're telling us is the Tana who taught this actually taught this Mishnah first. Okay? Vahach, Chazia Lahatera Vishaya. And here then she becomes suitable and permitted. Right? Vahadar, Chazia Lasura. Originally he thought to permit it. Okay? based on the logic that since there's no relationship to that household, she should be permitted. And <coughs> excuse me. And afterwards he's decided that was to make it Isur, prohibited. Right? Okay. And since this Chiddush of saying that she was permitted at one, forbidden at one time, renders her totally forbidden even later on, that Chiddush was so dear to him that he therefore advanced and said this Mishnah first or earlier, right? Mishnah lo zaza koma. And therefore, and they decided for the purpose of the learning, okay, not to change or omit it, but to keep the Mishnah in its regular order. There was a third brother who was not married to any of the sisters. That's a different case. Oh, but just a minute. But, but wouldn't he, wouldn't the, the Shimon still be uh, forbidden to to her at one point? Well, but I could have argued in that case, okay, if there's the third brother and he was married to a non-related right, woman, marry. okay, he could marry her. I he mean, could, he could be married. he could be the yabam for one of his brothers who was married to a sister. But there was a point in time where the brother was, regardless of whether he could marry her or not, the brother was still unforbidden to marry her. Yeah. yeah so but does that mean that he can never marry, never marry her if his, uh, if his uh, sister-in-law died? Right. Now that's what the Gemara means when we say the Dr. Medesa. He had this family unit of the three right. brothers. So it, even though she couldn't be in Yibam for this one, she could be in Yibam for the, the other, other one. one. Married a non-related right. woman. So it's not vacuumly based. It's not completely right. Rejected it's not from rejected from the household. Only from one of the brothers. By the, in this right. case, there's only two brothers. One of them died. So now you got yeah. a problem. With it's completely available. broken. So right. this yeah. one is is the, is the double portion which we could have learned from the other Mishnah. So right. Tana at first thought that the other one was okay. Then he decided it's not. That's a kiddush. So he left the other Mishnah. Right. And this one, okay, you don't need it, but he left it here. Right. I, I just want to, before we jump ahead with the bright, I just want to put one other element out here. And that is, it's interesting that the language of the Gemara uses the word midcha Baha'i Beta. It's as if 
it's saying that the Yabam relationship is not to the individual brother-in-law, but to the entire household, to all the family, okay? And this, I found that this was the first time that the Gemara used that language in what we've seen so far, okay? Right? And that may have some, some impact, okay, on the whole concept of, of the structure of Yibum when we say, well, it's usually the oldest and then the next and the next and so on. When she marries, she marries into the family and not just to a particular individual, okay? And now it could be that I overlook it, overlooked it in other previous sections of the Gemara, but it struck me here that that language was significant. Okay, let's go on now, new bright. Tanu Rabbanan. We have a situation where let's assume for the moment that uh, the man nevertheless had relations with her, okay? With the, his uh, brother's, right? His brother's wife or his sister's wife or whatever. All right, ba'aleha, okay? Chayav aleha mishum eshet ach umishum achot isha. If he had relations with his sister-in-law, exactly. Chayim, according to Tanakama, he's, he, and if he did it, we hopefully, not on, on Shogeg and not Mezid, okay? So if he did it on Shogeg, he would be Chayav tu chataot according to Tanakama. All right, achatas for Eshet Ach, and achatas for Achot Isha, all right? One being his sister-in-law, and one being the Torah mandate of the, right? So, uh, the uh, sister of his wife, okay? Right, Divrei Rabbi Yossi. That's the view of Rabbi Yossi. So we'll say for the moment that Rabbi Yossi is Tanakama here, <clears throat> First statement, Rabbi Shimon only, according to Rabbi Shimon, no chayav elamishum eshet ach bilvad. He is only, that gentleman, okay, is only over shogeg one chatas, namely for what? Eshet ach. So the Gemara says vahatanya, but here it's taught elsewhere Rabbi Shimon Omer, Eino Chayav Elamishum Achot Isha Bilvad. That in that kind of a situation, elsewhere Rabbi Shimon says that he would be over on Achos Isha. So how, so we have a, <coughs> sorry, Kasha Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Shimon in that case. He says one thing one place, one thing another place. How is that possible? Lo kasha, says the Gemara. No. Kan shenisa chai v'achar kach nesa meit. Okay, in one case, married when she was alive. In the other case, he married her after she died. Okay, the, his own wife died. Kan shenisa meit. Okay, v'achar kach nesa Chai. And in the other case, he married, his wife died, and then she married. Okay, so where we might argue, where, right? In one the, case. Who, which brother? They have the two brothers. Right. So one is called the brother, surviving brother is called the Chai. Right. The, one who the other died, is, is, is dying. So who right. married first? Right. Who, which in the case? What? The <laughs> Right. If the, if the surviving, if the surviving brother, married brother married first, before his other brother, before his other brother, so then when he's born on Nachaisishto, so it's that's, only a Nachaisishto. It's right? only one right. Katas. Right. Okay. That's the point. Okay. So what happens? The Rabbi Shimon, Hecha de Nasam Meit, Vachar Kach Nasachai. Then according to Rabbi Shimon, where was the second, where the surviving brother? I'm sorry, where the deceased brother married and afterwards the surviving brother. Kevan de Isur Achot Isha Lo Chayim. Since the prohibition of the, uh, the wife of the, uh, the, the, the sisters, 
right? Why? Didn't fall yet to Jabem Yabumi. He may go ahead and do Yibum, right? Right? Amar Rav Ashi, says Rav Ashi, Isur Achot Isha Mitla Talim. Rav Ashi disagrees and he says, no, that Isur of Achot Isha still is hanging there. It's still out there, okay? Vakai, <coughs> and it's possible that it will be applicable. Ipaka Isur Eshet Ach, if we end, so to speak, or stop the prohibition of Eshet Ach, Ate Isur Achot Isha Vichayel. Then in that case, the Isur of Achot Isha will come. Vehilkach lo paka, and therefore it's not broken. So his argument, therefore, you would still have just the one chatas uh, in that case. Visava, that's the thinking of Rabbi uh, Rav Ashi's explanation of why Rabbi Shimon could have said only one. Okay, Visava Rabbi Yossi, and Rabbi Yossi is of the opinion. Isur chal al isur. Is he really of the opinion then of a different perspective that you could have one isur, so to speak, on top of, in addition to another isur? Right? Because he's the one who's saying exactly you have two chatos in that case. So the Gemara says, Vahatanya, but aren't we taught elsewhere the following example? In other words, couldn't we get an answer to this question of whether Rabbi Yossi holds Iser Chalal Iser by another case? And here's a sample case. It's taught elsewhere in a mission. Evan, I'm sorry, Avar Avera, Sheyesh Bashte Mitot. If someone transgressed a particular sin where there are two death penalties, Nidun Bechamura. We judge him by the more stringent. Rabbi Yossi Omer, okay, Rabbi Yossi would say, in our example, Nidun Bazika Harishona Haba'a We would judge him by the, uh, I want to say, quality of the, of the family, of the bond of, from the first situation that would fall on him, from the very first case. Vitanya, and we would teach as follows. Ketzad Amar Rabbi Yossi Nidun B'zikari Shonah Ba'ala. How is it possible that Rabbi Yossi says we should judge him from the earlier bond, the earlier zika that comes to him? What's the situation? Chamoto v'neeset eshet ish. Okay, what about the fact that it's his mother-in-law? Okay, and she became also his an Eshet Ish. In other words, let's assume that he, it was a woman who had a daughter. Okay, the second brother married the daughter. Okay, and in that case, right, what was his mother-in-law was wound up marrying his brother. His brother died. No, no, no. We have one guy, right? He married a woman, so he has a mother-in-law. The mother-in-law did not have a husband at that time. He, he died, he divorced or whatever. Right. Then she went ahead and married somebody else. So first she was a mother, an Isra of Hamaisa's mother-in-law. Right. And then she added on another Isra of sure. Okay. So according to Abiyasi, so you give her whichever... Whichever is the more stringent. Whichever, happened, whichever first. happened first. Whichever happened first. First, which was, was the mother-in-law. Mother so so the that's the error. So to give her the one punishment. Nidun b'chamoto. And so there he says you'd argue according to his, to the, the fact of it being his mother-in-law. Eshet ish v'neaset chamoto. If it was the opposite order. If it was, she was, right? She was married. married. And then he married, and then, he married the daughter. And he married the daughter. So now okay. She and now she became his mother-in-law. Nidun be eshet ish. Then whatever was first, namely the eshet ish situation, you would judge it by that. Okay. So that was how the Gemara tried to say, how explain how it could be 
that you did it by the Zika Rishona. Right. So you see that right. the that one Isser takes that Isser, on right, another. one falls on another. So what so mm -hmm. how does he hold then? All right. So the Gemara wants to clarify mm -hmm. them. The Amar Rabbi Abahu, this is Rabbi Abahu, Mode Rabbi Yossi be Isser Mosi. No, he doesn't hold with Isser Chal al Isser. Okay. What he does hold by and acknowledge is an Isser Mosi. Okay. That it's a more like an extended kind of prohibition. Okay. So how do we understand that? Well, let's see. Tenach. That's understandable, okay, in the case where one brother, right, married, right, the surviving brother married, and then the other one married, died, okay, after he died. Migo de itosaf isur legabe achi, since it was a situation where another isur was added. Okay, to that same person, all right. Okay. This brother right. who married the sister of the right. surviving he brother. Right. He so now his wife, this new is, wife, is, is an addition also. So that's he the right. right. He the day. The Isha was added towards him. Okay. Elahecha dinasa mate vachakach nasacha. But where it was a situation where it was the opposite order, right? The Nassam mate, right? That the brother who deceased had married first. And she was an Asian. Right? She was Asian, right? Vachakach Nesachai. And afterwards, surviving the surviving brother married her. Sister. Right? My Isur Mosif Ika. What it extended or additional Isur happened here. And if you want to say, Migo de Itzar Bekulhu, right? Achvata ha, right? Since the Easter then falls on all, but not just on him, but on all the brothers, right? Hai Easter Kolehu, that it's a general Easter, okay? In that implication. Ela Amar Rava, but rather, what is Rava saying? Maale Ani Alav. Rava is saying, I, let's say, apply the situation that uh, I consider that he may have done two uh, different prohibitions, but I only hold him uh, obligatory in one case. Well, that's what Rabbi Yaisi meant when he said right. Not right. that he has to bring two. <coughs> but he did two things wrong. Well, right, and that's how he's going to explain it. And likewise, when Ravin came, he said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan the same thing. I hold him as if he committed two different acts, two different prohibitions. But he only, I only hold him uh, obligated in terms of the khatas to bring one khata. Okay. So the Gemara now asks, my nafkamina, what's the difference between the two? Okay. So the example is okay, so if you say he's high of one, but you still held that he committed two acts. What then is the difference for that person between saying that you hold him uh, responsible for two separate isurim versus only holding him uh, chaya for a single isur? Mm -hmm. So the Gemara is trying to clarify that. The kavro bein rishaim gemurim. Okay, that he would be buried among those who are completely yeah. bad people. Well, different okay. sections of the cemetery. Different, apparently, there were different sections of the cemetery. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the Gemara picks up now and continues with another situation. Ubi plugta. Okay. And we have a disagreement. Okay. A machloket regarding this situation. The itmar. About it, it was said as follows. 
זר ששימש בשבת. Let's, if we're talking about trying to clarify the difference between Isur Musaif, Amosif, and Isur Chal Al Isur, the Gemara is coming back to tell us there is a long standing machloket on this distinction. What is it? it? The following comes as an example to help us understand what that machloket is. Zar Shashimesh B'Shabbat. You have a non Kohen who goes ahead and carries out Avoda in the Beis Hamikdash on Shabbos. Okay? So, number one, as we go into this Gemara in a second, are we going to say he has done two things to Isurim? One, he's a Zar, and only a Kohen should carry out. Uh, uh, Avoda. And number two, he did it uh, Dafka on Shabbos, so he's over on Shabbos. So those are two separate Isurim. Or do we say that it's only a single act? It's an Isur Mosi. Okay? Now the Gemara is going to further clarify. Okay? Yeah. Okay? So let's see what happens. Let's see what the Gemara raises. All right? What Mosif would be an extended and added on. Okay? So the Gemara is going to say, okay, let's take this example. Okay? And see if we, which is the Mach which is, so to speak, the, the model, and see if this will clarify for us this issue. Okay? What happens? Rabbi Chia Omer, Chayav Shtayim. Here is the Machloket. Rabbi, according to Rabbi Chia, that in, in that case, that individual would be, right? It would be held guilty, responsible for two. Right? Bar Kapara Omer, Ein chayav ela echad. According to Bar Kapara, he's only one obligation. What happens? Notice how fahits they get. Kafatz Rabbi Chia v'nishma. Rabbi Chia jumps up and he takes an oath. Ha'avoda by the temple worship. Kach shamati mi Rabbi. This is what I heard from Rabbi Shtayim, that he's over unto. Response, Kafatz Bar Kapara Venishma. Bar Kapara jumps up and takes an oath. Ha'avoda, by the temple worship. Kach shamati mi Rebbe. This is what I heard from Rebbe. Echat, he's only chai of one. Okay? Now the Gemara wants to clarify. Hitchil Rebbe Chia Ladun. Rebbe Chia began to explain his view, okay, logically in this way. Shabbat l'cho me'esra. Shabbat, any act on melacha on Shabbat is forbidden to all. Kesheahutra b'mikdash, when certain kinds of melacha acts, like avoda, were permitted in the base of mikdash, etzel kohanim hutra. They were permitted for kohanim. The kohanim hutra v'lo lezarim. For Kohanim, they were permitted, and not for non-Kohanim. Yesh kan mishum zarut. We have, therefore, an issue of non-Kohanim. That would be one prohibition. V'yesh kan mishum Shabbat. And we have here in regards to Shabbat. That's a second prohibition. Okay? So that's his argument, Rabbi Chia. Why he would say he's Chayav Shtayim. Now we see Bar Kapara is going to give his view. Hitchil Bar Kapara Ladun. Bar Kapara began to reason as follows. Shabbat Makol Nesra. Shabbat was, pro okay, Malacha of any kind for all was prohibited. Keshehutra, when it was permitted. B'mikdash Hutra. It was permitted in the area of the base of Mikdash. Okay, ein kan elazerut. Here we only have a situation of a non-kohen 
performing avoda in the base of Mikdash. All right? Okay? What happens? Baumum shesh, right? So, so that would be Enkan Elizarut, all right? Period. So, therefore, his argument would be only one. Okay? Why did they get so excited? <laughs> okay, we'll see. Wait, why? Because the two of them have a machloket on this topic, I'm suggesting, on more than just this issue. Okay, we're going to continue now because the Gemara says, hold on a second. You think that's the only place that these two guys argue on this topic? There's another and another. Here's another case. Baumum shashimesh betuma. Okay, a Kohen who has a mum went ahead and he carried out a voda in a status of tuma. Okay, that would seem to imply, right? He's over being a Baal Mum is one. He's over doing it in Tuma. That would be two. Seem to imply two. Rebbe Chia Omer, Chayav Shtayim. Rebbe Chia says he's over on two. Bar Kapara Omer, and Chayav Ela Achat. Bar Kapara says he's only over on one. Right? Kafatz Rebbe Chia Venishba. Rabbi Chia jumps up and takes an oath. Ha'avoda, by the temple worship. Kach shamati mi Rebbe. This is what I learned from Rebbe. Shtayim. He's over on two. Kafatz bar kapara v'nishma. Gar bar kapara jumps up and takes an oath. Ha'avoda, again, swearing by the temple. Kach shamati mi Rebbe achat. Okay, again. All right. Same machloket. Same two people. Is that the only case? And now we get the explanation, right? Hitchil Rabbi Chia Ladun. Rabbi Chia began to explain it logically. Tum'ah l'kol ne'esra. A status of Tum'ah is forbidden to all. Kishehutra b'mikdash. When it was permitted to carry out certain kodshim in the base of mikdash. Mm -hmm. Eitzel Kohanim Tmimim Hutra. It was only permitted for Kohanim who were, let's say, perfect, without blemish. Okay? Le Kohanim Tmimim Hutra, Velo Le Baalei Mumim. To Kohanim who were without blemish, it was permitted, but not to Kohanim who had a mum, who had a problem, disfigurement, whatever. Yesh kan mishum ba'alei mumun. Therefore, we have here an example of, all right, a ba'alei, kohen ba'al mum, v'yesh kan mishum tumah. And we also have an example of tumah. Therefore, he argues two. two okay, two sets, right. Come back now. It chil bar kapara ladu. We come that bar kapara is going to give his reasoning. Again, notice it's all based on attempted logic. Tum'ah l'chol nesra. Tum'ah was prohibited for all. K'sheh mikdash When it was permitted, all right, to have somebody who was Tameh in the vicinity of the base of mikdash. Hutra. It was permitted. Ein kan elamishum bal mum. Therefore, we should argue we only have the one case of the Baal Mun. Okay. Now, is that the only case that the two of them argue on this? No, we've got a third example, says the Gemara, where the same two individuals argue again the same argument. What is it? Third case. Zar Shachal Malika. Okay. You have a non Kohen who is eating a korban that is really nevela, okay? Because it was only done by a bird sacrifice that was only done through malika, okay? What happens? Okay, so you would have again a czar and you have a case of nevela. Rabbi Chia Omer, Chayav Shtayim, he's obligated with two. Bar Kapara Omer, Ein Chayav Ela, 
he's only over on one. Again, the same scenario. Kafatz ba Rabbi Chia v'nishba. Rabbi Chia jumps up, takes an oath avoda by the temple worship. Right? Kach shemati mi Rabbi. I learned from Rabbi Shtaim too. Kafatz bar kapara v'nishba. Bar kapara jumps up and takes an vow avoda by the temple. Kach shemati mi Rabbi yacha. I only heard from Rabbi one. So they go through the process of logic again. It chil Rabbi Chia ladun. Rabbi Chia begins to logically deduce as follows. Nevela lechol neesra. A nevela, right? An inappropriate slaughtered animal is prohibited to all. Keshehutra, when it's permitted, b'mikdash eitzel kohanim hutra. It was only permitted in the base hamikdash regarding kohanim. Le kohanim hutra, Velo Lazarim. For Kohanim it was permitted, but not to non Kohanim. Yesh Khan Mishum Zerut. I therefore have the example of non Kohen, which is one. Vyesh Khan Mishum Malika. And I have the example of how the Korban was performed, okay, through simply Malika, which in this case renders it Nevela, and therefore that's a second. It chil bar kapara ladun. Bar kapara comes forward and he gives his explanation. Nevela the kol me'esra. Nevela was prohibited for all, right? Keshehutra b'mikdash hutra. When it was permitted to be eaten in the base of mikdash, it was permitted. En kan ela mishum zerut. Therefore we say the only issue is because of zerut. So the Gemara, let's just roll over a tiny bit on Lama Gimel. Bamai Kemiflage. What are they arguing about? Be'isur Kolel. They're arguing about the whole of a overall and large prohibition. Va'aliba the Rabbi Yossi. Okay. And according to the view of Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Chia Savar, Rabbi Yossi, Be'isur Kolel. Mechayev Tarte, Rabbi Chi is of the view that the, right that Rabbi Yossi would hold with an Easter Kolel, you are going to be obligated with two, right? And therefore he would hold Easter Chal al Isu, Bar Kapara Savar Lo Mechayev El Echada, and Bar Kapara only holds according to one, and so tomorrow. We need to pick up with my Isur Kolel. What do we mean then to clarify is an Isur Kolel, this overall overriding prohibition, is it is Isur Chalal Isur an example or is Isur Mosi for an example? Okay, and that's where we'll pick it. That's... <laughs> there could be more, but notice what happened. What did the Gemara do? At first, it showed us that in this, that the same Bale Machloket, right? It's uh, sometimes a pattern. I tell you, yeah. bring one and one bring the others. Do they really jump up? Well. The point, I, I mean, usually they sit, right? It's like the Knesset. Okay, yeah. <laughs> they get fahits. You know, no, but notice they're both arguing that they learned it from Rebbe. So they're, so the, okay.